All right, so what is this mechanism uh, of a pulsar? Well, it is a neutron star. Now, some time ago, I was wandering through Goodwill and I spotted this thing. I'm not even sure what it is, but I just thought this is probably the best model of what a neutron star looks like ever. Uh, a neutron star is the most perfect sphere uh, that occurs in nature. Uh, perfectly smooth, smooth surface uh, of any sort of uh, celestial body. Uh, remember, it's pure neutrons. Well, it rotates. As uh, a star collapses, because these stars do spin, and as it collapses, that rotation is going to spin. And it has a magnetic field, just like the Earth has a magnetic field. It has a North Pole and a South Pole. And like most such objects, they don't rotate on their magnetic poles. And the Earth doesn't, and neither do these pulsars. They sort of rotate like this with their, now let these pieces of tape represent the magnetic poles. And so it rotates like so. And this rotation uh, is, is uh, something similar to an electric generator. So the rotation creates a magnetic field Think of an electric generator. Now, right now, Saul, our son, has a 30-day rotation, roughly a 30-day rotation. And here's where we have to think about angular momentum. like an ice skier. When we see an ice skater spin, the ice skater will usually pull in her arms to increase the speed of the spin. And what does that have to do with angular momentum? Well, momentum is that uh, quality that wants a moving object to mean maintain a, a level of momentum. So if it momentum equals distance times mass. And so if you shorten the distance, you have to increase the velocity. All right. so, as, so as a star collapses, the rotation increases. So if you had a main sequence star rotating at roughly a one month period, and it collapsed, collapses to less than one rotation per second, at neutron star size, which is roughly 20 kilometers, the magnetic field will increase to thousands of times the Earth's field.
This magnetic field is not aligned at the poles, like I said. Therefore, the field rotates rotates through the gas and the dust. Okay. Particles become excited. Now remember, when we talked about excitation of an atom, what we're talking about is, is the electron in that atom jumping out to a higher energy level, all right? That's excitation. And as that electron moves back down to the ground state, it emits a photon, all right? And the higher the energy level, the higher the energy level of the photon that's emitted. Okay, remember, photons are electron poop, all right? So the result is high energy radio waves. Okay, can range from radio to X rays. And gamma rays covers the whole spectrum, really. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to put up several examples uh, of uh, what pulsar uh, pulses sound like, uh, so you can actually hear what Jocelyn Bell and her colleagues were listening to. And uh, there's going to be some ad um, ad additional material also to go along with this lecture. Uh, there's some stuff in the book that I want you to look at, but that's the basic gist of what a neutron star, uh, a pulsar, uh, is. Now, there was one other thing that I neglected to uh, cover when we were talking about high mass star depth. So uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to have you uh, go back to page 82 in the textbook. Okay. 82 uh, in the textbook is... Uh, a little bit more on neutron stars, okay? And uh, they are the stellar remnants, number one, they are the stellar remnants of uh, type two supernova. Essentially, the leftover core. And electron degeneracy does not support them. Neutron degeneracy does. Neutron degeneracy pressure is greater than electron degeneracy pressure.
Therefore, neutron stars can exceed the Chandrasekhar limit. neutron density. We've talked about that. But now what I want to do is go to this last piece on the page. High mass stars that are greater than 25 solar masses. Okay, stellar remnant of a type 2. star exceeds when it exceeds three solar masses it collapses To what's called a singularity. Or in other words, a black hole. Specifically, this is a stellar black hole. All right, and this limit, now we had the Chandra Sekar limit, which is the limit of neutron electron electron degeneracy pressure, but now there's a limit to neutron degeneracy, degeneracy pressure, and that is the Oppenheimer Volkoff. That is the mass limit of a neutron star. Three solar masses, the Oppenheimer Volkoff limit. Three solar masses. And that's the part that I wanted you to, get, to uh, uh, get up to speed on. I, I neglected to tell you that when I was talking about uh, uh, high mass star depth, but uh, now you have it. So, yeah, so when we get to 20, in a nutshell, when we get to a 25 solar mass star or greater, that star has so much mass that the neutron core is going to exceed three solar masses and it will collapse to a singularity and so the stellar remnant in this case is a black hole uh, the, it has reached that oppenheimer volkoff limit so that's how a stellar black hole uh, is created all right we'll stop here